Alrighty, guys. Um, we are back with Punch and Tell, and on the other end, I've got Katie Mitchell. Hey, Katie, how are you doing? Hey, good. How are you? Pretty good. All right. So Katie said that she'd jump on and um, have a chat with me, which I really appreciate. Um, Katie is one of the most exciting female fighters that we've got in Australia at the moment. Um, really, really big up and comer, and has a lot of experience, especially for her age. So, um, Katie, what I'll get you to do is I'll just get you to introduce yourself to the people. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, fight record, all that kind of jazz. Hey guys, so I'm Katie. Um, I've had 14 fights for 12 wins, two knockouts um, and two losses. Um, I'm 20 years old um, and I pretty much started fighting when I was about 14. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, so what what got you what got you into fighting? Because um, mm -hmm. it's not every day that you hear a lot of female fighters. Like it's good that it's becoming more of a um a norm, I guess. But yeah, what what got you into it? Yeah, so I was um about fourteen when I first started. So my um dad actually took me um to my first ever fight gym, which at the time was called um, Elite Fight Gym in Penrith. Um, I was always kind of like a real, like naughty kid in school. And I yeah. think he just, wanted, he's like, this girl needs an outlet and she's got a mouth. So I think she needs to learn how to defend herself. So I think yeah. that was his main intention was he wanted me to know how to defend myself, particularly growing up as well in Western Sydney, which is a bit of a rougher area. Like he just yeah. wanted me to do that. And then I just fell in love with it instantly. Like all the time I'd be like, dad, can we go to the gym? Can we go? Can we go all the time? Yeah. And then eventually, um, my dad was um, injured for a bit and couldn't go. So I would walk from my house all the way to the gym so yeah. I could go and train. Nice. Um, and how long were you, how long were you training roughly before you either knew that you wanted to fight or um, got asked to fight? Um, so pretty much from the first day I trained, I was like, Oh, I want to fight. Like from the first day I trained, I'd go home and I'd like YouTube all the local fighters at the time and I'd be watching their fights. So I'd be watching yeah videos of the people who were in the fighters class at the time. And I was like, Oh, I really want to do this. But in New South Wales, the um, age is 16. Yeah. Um, and so I kept training and just training and just plodding along. Um, I, and then my gym that I was at actually shut down. Um, so I didn't train um, for a couple months. And then I um, found I went over to a gym called Moore, which was um, Jason Sherry's gym at the time. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and so I went over there and I was training there and was getting ready and I wanted to fight and stuff. And then that gym actually shut down too. So right. I was starting to think I was the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you would. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, I, so I moved over, so I was about 16 now. I moved over to zoo fitness. Yep. Um, and I had my first fights with them. Um, and so it was about two years. So I was um, just almost 17 when I had my first fight. Yeah, sweet. Um, and something else I guess I'll ask as well is I know it's it's kind of good at our gym that we've got at the moment. We've got a few females that come along and, and train and, and um it's kind of good like they can they can um spar each other as well as the guys as well. But um I think it's kind of good for girls to have um a couple of other females in there that they can train with. When you first started and the gyms you've gone to, have you always had some girls that you can train with or have you ever gone to gyms where you know like you've been the only girl there uh pretty much like when i first started so the first couple of gyms i was at there'd only ever be like one other girl who's an actual fighter like there'd be girls in fitness class but actual fighters there was only ever one um and then when i was at zoo i was pretty much the main girl as well like i was the only one that was fighting there was girl there was two other girls in the fight class but that was about it yeah um but it was always usually male dominated. Yep. But um, I always think I was pretty lucky because I am like bigger for a girl. So that I've always been able to fight like there's boys my size. You know what I mean? It's not yep. like I'm a um, 54 kilo girl who's trying to spar with the men. Yep. So yeah. So I always found that usually. But um, when I moved over to UTC, that's so female dominated. Like there's four of us girls who are fighting actively all the time. And yeah. it was like, yeah, the girls just run it <laughs> over yeah. that gym. Yeah, that's um, that's the kind of vibe that I've gotten as well, and from, and from what I've seen, yeah. like it's um, that's a gym where you know if you get matched against fight one of the girls in that gym, you're going to be in for a pretty tough night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I think um, I definitely think probably in New South Wales we've got the strongest female team. Definitely. Yeah, a lot of killers from that gym. Um, <laughs> so 
tell us a little bit about some of your fights because you've you've had um you've had a fair few fights to be honest and and not only that um you've had a few fights overseas as well and you've tried some different codes um you've done boxing kickboxing muay thai um yeah just tell us about a few of the fights and and um your experience from them probably the most memorable ones you've had uh yeah so um i'll go in order of the fights so my fifth fight um, is still to this day one of my favorite fights. Um, I was um, I was 18 when I had my fifth fight, and um, the two before that, the fights I won both of them, but I kind of didn't fight to my full potential, I believe, because I was 18 and I was partying and I was going out and I was drinking. So my fights, I didn't like them. I knew I could be better than that. Yeah. So for this fifth fight, I hadn't fought in about seven months, and I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna this is going to be my best fight yet. And I just trained the hardest I've ever trained in my life. Like it was just nonstop. It, I would not eat one bad thing. Um, and I was matched with a girl from Stockade in Canberra. Yep. Yep. I know um, that yep. Uh, yeah, was, it was, she um, would have been under Josh Tonner at the time. Was it? Yeah. 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 Yep. It was Josh in her corner. Um, and so we were matched at 63 kilos um, mm-hmm. and I was fit as, um, was just ready to go and I jumped in the ring and the girl was really short like half probably like a head shorter than me I'm a pretty tall girl but she was short mm. and um, so the bell went and I think in the first like five seconds she head kicked me and I remember thinking how did she just how did she even get her leg up here and I was rocked like so rocked and it was just it was K1 rules this time it was my first K1 fight and it was just a war like the whole fight was um, just back and forth, just absolutely smashing each other. And then I was, um, but I was so fit, like as the fittest I've ever felt in my life. It came to the third round and I was ready to go, which I've never, yeah. I had never felt before. Yeah. And um, I actually managed to come out and I think it was like 40 seconds into the third round. I threw this head kick and it was really slow, but it was hard. And I head kicked her and she actually turned around and started walking back to a corner. Like she didn't know where she was. So I just oh, ran wow. and started, yeah, I ran at her and started punching and then um, the ref stopped it, gave her an eight count and then called the fight. What what show but, was um, that on that you fought? I was on J and I promotions. Did, I think, did we fight on that same show? I think it was actually. Yes. Yeah. I think that was, yeah. Yeah. That was Cause it. I was actually going to mention this to you. I remember that the very first time that um I, I guess kind of saw you, like I never met you, but um I remember in my corner, I think you were either in the same corner or you, you walked past it. And I remember going, oh, man, that girl's pretty switched on. Like, she looks like she's pretty <laughs> focused. Because I was packing myself. This was my second fight. At that time. I was absolutely packing myself. And I remember seeing you heaps switched on. And I, I fought pretty early in the night. Um, I think I fought against a guy from Chopper. And one of our guys yeah, fought, yeah. Yeah, fought another yeah. guy from um, Josh's gym. So I was nice and early and I got to watch the rest of the fights. But... um. I remember going into the crowd and one of my friends was like, she, she's um, from Penrith. She was like, oh, you got to watch this girl, Katie. She's really, really good. And I remember that. Yeah. I remember, yeah, 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 head kick. Yeah. Yeah, so, oh, yeah. That's, that's awesome then. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess that really shows, you know, when you kind of cut out the partying and stuff like that and really crap. Definitely, out. for yeah, sure. Focus you yeah. Up. Um, yeah. Yeah, so for, for any other fights that, um, that really stuck with um, you? Yeah, and then so I went to New Zealand um, early last year. Yeah. Um, this is one of my favorite things that I've done. So I went over there for the Waco Championships, which is K1 rules. Yeah. Um, so because I won a state title over here, I qualified to go over to New Zealand and fight for the Oceania titles. Yeah. Um, and so I um, prepped for that. I had a pretty good prep. Um, I thought the fights, because it's a weight bracket, it's not, uh, it's like minus and then a certain weight. Um, so I thought our division was minus 67 cause that's what the boys is. Um, and then I found out, well, I think it was like a week out that it was minus 65. Oh, and I was like, Oh, so I had a really like, a, like just struggled for that weight cut. And then, um, so I managed to get my weight pretty close to down. And then, um, so we got on the plane. So I went over with, um, Jacinta Austin. Yep. who fights out of my gym as well. Um, she's an absolute weapon. So she was coming yeah. over as well. Um, so we went over together and on the weigh-in day, I actually got my period, which makes you two kilos, which makes you around one to two kilos heavier. Yeah. So I woke up and weighed myself and I was like, I wanted to cry. <laughs> I was yeah. so, so far over. And um, 
So we went and we were doing um, like baths in the hotel room and stuff like that, trying to get the weight down. And um, so I was, went to bed that night for the next day of the flights because it was the same day weighing. So I tried to get my weight down the night before. Um, and I went into the room we were in and the room I was in actually had like bugs all, all through the bed. Oh, wow. So like, I, I don't know what they were, but it was, just, if there was bed bugs or whatever, but it was disgusting. So I then got moved to this other room, which was like two meters by two meters with this tiny little mattress, like that big. Oh, in it. wow. So yeah. every, everything was just going wrong. And I was just like, what am I doing? I've come all this way. Nothing's going right. Yeah. Um, and so on fight day, I went to the thing because we had to weigh in in the morning and then you fight after. Yeah. Um, so I went in there. I had like six tracksuits on and I'm trying to sweat. And um, it, because it's in New Zealand, it was so cold. Like I couldn't yeah. sweat. Yeah, it's pretty and cold I could actually, there. Yeah. I could see one of the girls I was fighting who was a New Zealander just standing at the fence, like just staring at me. And I remember wearing this tracksuit and I was just eyeballing her. And I, was yeah. like, <laughs> I can't believe I've gone through sleeping with bugs and, I'm here cutting weight. I just was so off it, but I managed to come in um, at the weight. Yep. Um, I was a hundred grams over and we said, Oh, do you want me to strip off? Like I didn't care at that time. I would have got naked in front of everyone in that room. I did not care. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I'm sick of this. And yeah. You like, just wanted nah. to make weight. The, the, yeah. I was like almost in tears and the guy's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so then um, it was about two hours before I was going to fight. Um, and I was backstage and I just felt flat. Nothing, nothing felt good except I was right kicking so hard. Like I was kicking in the back room and all these New Zealand guys were like just staring, watching me kick this pad. Yeah. And um, so I went out and um, I managed to win the first fight with a first round body kick KO. Yep. Um, so yeah, it was, I think the fight was, yeah, it was like 30 seconds or something, but I remember I was standing in the ring and I was just thinking, oh, I'm going to gas. I'm going to gas. I can't do this. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I managed to come away with that. Um, and then I managed, my weight stayed down after that because you had to weigh in the next day for the final. Yeah. Um, and then I came in for the final and the girl who I was fighting actually came in over. Yeah. So it was my decision then if I wanted to say, no, nah, I'm not going to fight you and just get the belt or if I wanted to fight. And I was like, I flew all the way over to New Zealand mm. to get a fight because I was struggling to get fights. Um, I'm going to take the fight. And yeah. I, I didn't want something I didn't earn. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, not who I exactly. am as a person. Um, so I took the fight um, and managed to get a points decision on that one and won the Oceana K1 Waco title. That's huge. That's absolutely yeah. huge. That was, that, was, um, that was something actually I was going to ask you um, a little bit later on, but I'll ask you now is... Um, I remember one time, I think it was for one of the Yokao shows, um, the, I think one of my coaches or something said to me, hey, look, um, one of the girls who's fighting on the show, are you still at the gym? They're going to weigh in um, at our gym. Are you right to hang around with her or, or let her in to use the sauna? Yeah, and she actually rocked up and she said, oh, you know, I'm fighting it this weight. And I was like, oh, cool, I catch your weight going in. And she said to me, she's like, I got my period this week and I, I'm two kilos over. Like, yeah. And I can't do anything to get rid of it. And um, yeah. I think that's one of the, such a hard thing for a, for a female to, to deal with in this sport is um, it's something that's essentially out of your control. And it's, it's, you know, yeah. like, like what can you do? And you kind of think, you know, is that like, is that something that there should be some leniency for? Like, cause it's, yeah. it's, it's very difficult thing to kind of, um, for you know like uh, essentially a fight could be off if you know if a, if a female wakes yeah. up a day or two before and she can't lose the weight and then what does the other fighter do so i mean um yeah i, I didn't really understand that that was an issue until this girl rocked up and she, <laughs> she was just like she's like yeah um i literally woke up this morning two kilos heavier and i've done nothing yeah. and i was like yeah Oh wow! And I went home and spoke to Indy, and I was like, "Oh, this happened." She goes, "Yeah." <laughs> she goes, "Yeah." There's, <laughs> yeah. There's some mornings I wake up and you know if I hop on the scale and have a look, and I go, "Why the hell am I two kilos heavy and bloated?" And yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, it's a, it's. I guess that's just one more thing that's um hard part about being a female fighter. I guess being a woman is hard work. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Very much so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, we do get it pretty easy as guys sometimes to not have to deal with some of that stuff. Um, so you were telling me before you had a boxing fight. Um, yes. How'd you find that? 
Um, so this was after, so I had, uh, I just had a title fight um, and I won by split points, which was a uh, full tie fight. And the girl really gave it to me with hands. Um, I managed to win because I was just kicking and clinching, which is kind of my thing anyway. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to have a gap in my game. I'm just going to do heaps of hands. So I was training um, with um, our boxing coach at UTC. Yep. Um, I was training with him and um, I was like, all right, let's get a fight. I want to get in there. I want to not be able to feel comfortable and just use my hands. Um, it's not that my hands were ever bad. I just was more comfortable kicking. Yep. Um, so I, we got matched with this girl and we, it was supposed to be a fight. And we just, they said she was heavy because it was kind of short notice. And I said, if her weight can start with a six, then I'm happy to fight. And they were like, yeah, no worries. And my boxing coach said, if she comes in at 70, we'll just do an exhibition. And I was like, yeah, no worries. Yeah. So I was pretty fit at the time. Um, so I went in because boxing same day weigh in as well. Um, I came in, um, shoes, tracksuit pants, jumper, at my phone in my pocket, stood on the scales and I was 68. Yeah. Um, it's not the same story these days, but at that time it was. <laughs> Lock, lockdown, lockdown gets you good. Um, and I was like, yeah, no worries. And then, um, so she weighed in. I didn't see her weigh in. And they came up to me and they're like, oh, the girl you're, com- you're fighting's come in at, I think it was like 75 kilos. Oh, and wow. I was like, I almost choked when they told me that. Mm. And I was like, okay. And they're like, we, they, they wouldn't, they're like, we're not letting it be a fight. Like it can't be a fight. Um, it's too heavy. So they made it, um, it was an exhibition and, um, she was a bit, um, older girl. Um, but I remember we were standing next to each other to walk out and I was looking at her and it was, I was like, I cannot believe I'm about to get in and fight this chick. Mm. And, um, we both jumped in the ring and you could actually hear the crowd, like all like murmuring stuff. Like everyone was confused at like, cause we just looked so different. You get that. You see that um, a lot. Like people yeah. will be like, uh, how are those two guys in the same weight division? Like, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, and it was, that was so much fun. Like uh, I think at this time I'd had title fights back to back and it was nice to just know this was just an exhibition. This was just like a spa. So I had so much fun in there. Um, just not having all that same pressure. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, so it was fun and I managed, um, like I just had a good time and I was just a lot faster than her. But when she hit me, I was like, Oh, that's yeah. that extra five kilos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was um, a really fun, like probably one of the most enjoyable um, fights that I've had. How did you um, find dealing with the kids? I know when I've um, boxing sparred and um, sparred different boxes, I often um, notice the pace difference. Um <laughs> Because I, I know it's a lot easier, like, um, you get that big difference where, I guess, kickboxers and Muay Thai guys go, yeah, but, you know, like, if we kicked your legs in, you, you'd struggle. <laughs> but um, I, yep. I will happily admit that when I've sparred just pure boxers, I struggle to keep up hands-wise with them, or I just find myself getting a lot more tired. Um, mm-hmm. how, how did you deal with that? Um, I think in the fight, it didn't show that much because of the weight difference because I was a lot smaller. I had the pace advantage of it. Um, but I definitely know what you mean. Like when I've sparred um, girls boxing. So I've done sp- boxing sparring before with um, Arlene Angerfist, um, mm-hmm. who was a world champion boxer um, a couple of years back. And I've done sparring with her. And the thing I found was when I was jab cross, she was jab cross hook up a cut cross you know what i mean like just yeah. so many more hands back and yeah i definitely get what you mean it's definitely is a completely mm. different sport no that, that's cool i guess um i guess that's one of the cool things um uh, being able to go between the go between them um you know we've seen a, a couple of um good guys um in australia that have gone from muay thai uh ben ben mahoney um nathan yeah. Wilson's doing it as well those guys getting into boxing having a few boxing matches yeah. um yeah and, you know, some of the guys, you know, like even Cody's had a few boxing matches, guys like that, that um, it's just kind of good to be able to step into that and, and stay active because those, I think those fights are always available. Whereas, um, definitely, like I know, yeah. You, you, yeah, you've told me personally, you've struggled to um, be able to get fights at times because either people just don't want to fight you or, <laughs> or you know, like finding a, another female fighter with the same experience as you is, is quite difficult. Because at the moment, yeah. you're still amateur, but looking are you looking to go pro or, or am I poking at you a bit to go pro? <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, it's still all amateur fights at the moment. Cause I'm trying to, I feel like there's still 
in New South Wales, like three more girls that are amateurs that I'm like, I want to fight you before I change. Like, but pros definitely um, in the near future. Yeah. But I just don't like the thing is, it's not like a, oh, you're not ready for it. It's more yeah, who course. can I fight? You know what I mean? It's, yeah. um, I'm going to struggle even when I go to pros. It's going to get hard. It's going to get hard to get people to pay you to be on this show. And there's not many pro women. So yeah. it's just, it's, it's more like a tactical thing, trying to figure out what's the best option for me to continue fighting the way I want to. And to be able to get fights as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. As you said, it's quite difficult to, um, to always get matches, whether it's pro or amateur. So, and you're just trying yeah. to stay as active as you can, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, any, any other fights that um, have really stuck with you or, or yeah, if you want to. Uh, yeah. I'll, one more. Um, there was uh, um, when I fought for my East coast full tie rules title. Um, so this was um, about three weeks after I fought in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, I was fighting on a show in Nowra um against a girl from queensland so she was from um chaos gym in queensland yep um and she but she was a local girl so she'd moved up there but she used to live in Nara and used to train at the gym that was hosting the show so it was like her kind of show but she was coming down to fight in front of everyone again yeah um and i'd watch a video of her fighting and she was just big big hands and um so I remember I was pretty nervous before I walked out for it. I was like, this chick hits hard. Like we fought at 63.5. Um, and I think she came in at 63.5 flat, but she was a solid girl, like just yeah. muscle on muscle. And, um, you know me, I'm pretty, my body type's really lanky. Um, yeah, right. and, um, I was like, oh, I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, she must be short. And um, I remember getting in the ring and um, I was called out first. I got in the ring and I see her walking out and I was like, get fucked. I was like, she is just as tall as me. I was like, how did you make this weight? Yeah. <laughs> and um, there's actually a really cool photo. Um, it's on my social media of I'm leaning on the ropes and I look really focused in my face. And I just laugh at it all the time because really in my head I was shitting myself. But it just it looks like so cool. And I'm like, no, nope, that's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Good poker yeah. face. Um, so we went all five rounds full tie. Um, she was, um, I came out really strong in the first two. Um, she came out strong in the second two, hit me with hands. And I just remember my coach, yelling at me the last one. He's like, cause I was gassed as I was so tired. He's like clinch. He goes, walk forward with everything you've got. If you want to win, if you want this belt, walk forward, grab her and knee up. And I got up and I was exhausted. And I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> um, and so I <laughs> yeah. managed to like, I was just walking through these punches, like, come here, let me near you. <laughs> and, yeah. um, Give me a cuddle. Then Come it, on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that came down to a split points decision and I managed to get the win. Um, wow. But, and I, I was real cool after that. Like it was so much respect and stuff like that. Um, and then when she found out I won, there was just this social media blue. Like I just saw all these posts of you won that fight, blah, 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 like all over social media. And I'm like, I get really g'd up, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah, I've tried uh, I'm to. From, I've, uh, I'm from, I've gone yeah. fishing on you a few times and thrown a few comments to get you a bit cranky, but um, uh, no, it, it is, yeah. and, and you can't help but take it personally sometimes, and, and yeah. you, you understand that at the end of the day. Yeah. Like I've had fights that I've thought, you know what, like I probably should have got the nod in that, but um, yeah. especially at, I guess at your level where there are belts on the line, and she has done that in front of her home crowd, it, it probably would have stung really to to not yeah. get the nod there so um i understand yeah. and look to be honest everyone loves a little bit of drama um that's yeah, not the worst yeah. it, it makes for a good rematch so um yeah so you had a bit of drama yes yeah, so we, there was all that and i was reading that and um someone actually wrote oh you almost stopped her at one point and i was blowing up i was talking <laughs> to my family and i was like she hit me a bunch of times but i was never rocked you never see her hit me on the ropes like i was just going off and i was like whatever but then, so she actually put in um, a formal challenge to that sanctioning body, like saying that I had to defend my belt. And um, I was like, I don't think that doing a rematch straight away is the best thing. I think you should go out, yeah. fight different people, get better, and then do it again. And I was like, oh, I, don't, I didn't really want to. I was like, I'll fight you again, but I don't want to do it straight away. And then, um, so the ruling on the sanctioned body said, well, you've got six months to do it. Um, so we ended up fighting maybe, maybe like four months later or something um 
And so she put it in the challenge and I was, I was just so adamant. I was like, no, nah, it's not even going to be close this time. Like I refuse. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be yeah. here. So no one can post anything. Yeah. And um, she actually um, came in something like two kilos over um, when we got the thing. And I just thought it was hilarious. I was like, you challenged me for this. And then you missed no, weight. weight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, so there was the same thing. So they said, yep, you can say, no, nope, you don't want to fight her. You can fight her three rounds. Like either way, she can't have the belt because she's not in the weight division. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I want to do five rounds. Like, I don't care. I'll do, I want to do the five rounds. Um, so I managed to do it. And um, yeah. So, and, and then this time it was not even close. Like the whole time was just, was way more on it. Um, she did get my nose going in the last round. She landed like a flush hand and my, there was blood everywhere. Um, but this time, yeah, it wasn't even close. Probably won all five rounds. So that was just so, so satisfying for me. Yeah, to get um, that win. Um, yeah. So having that little, because some people, um, some people love when people come at them and, and go at them and it fires fires them up. Um, we've seen it in some of the bigger um, organizations like the UFC and stuff like that when someone gets in their face and trash talks or, or um, talks shit about them, the other person can often cow or get in their head. Do you reckon that absolutely lit a fire? Like what was tra- What was the camp like for that fight, knowing that you were like, no, nah, I'm going to shut up everyone? Yeah, well, like I said, I'm from Western Sydney. So I definitely <laughs> think that, I definitely think if you say something, it's going to light a fuel under anyone from around here. <laughs> I yeah. definitely think trash talking is not the way to, um, Go against a Western Sydney but, fighter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're bred different down here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And I was just adamant. I mean, I was training, um, I was training two times a day, um, almost every day. I was training. So I was training five days a week, two times for most of it, just smashing my cardio. I was doing heaps of boxing work cause I knew she had the hands. Um, and I was just training with everyone I could. So I'd train at the gym. I was at UTC um, I'd train with one of my old coaches, um, just in the park. We'd hit pads when we could. Um, I'd go to, um, my old gym zoo fitness and go and spar some of the bigger girls there. Like I was just adamant that I was not going to lose this one. Like it was, it was just one of the most dedicated I've ever been because I was so adamant. I was like, one, I'm not losing my title. This is my title. I worked hard for it. And two, I got to shut everyone up. Mm. And obviously training hard, get you the results you want. Um, and can I can I just ask um how how was she to you after after the second fight? Do you think there was uh, respect there, or is there still you know if she got offered a third fight, do you think she'd want it? Um, there was um there was another post um, after the fight um, uh, that I saw, and it was something along the lines of um couldn't get it this time. Um, the weight cut uh, the weight cut um, had me with no energy, but. Um, I walk out unscratched and her blood was everywhere uh, and I'd read it and I was like, get out. Like, yeah. I was like, all I know is you keep leaving with excuses and I'm leaving with a belt. So, so yeah, <laughs> and that's it. That's it. So, well, yeah. um, no, that's good. And, and look, um, yeah, I, I, I know you personally. And I know that you're not that type of person. That's, that's a, you know, you will definitely give respect if um, they respect you, yeah. but if they're going to trash yeah. talk, you're definitely going to bring it and make them, <laughs> yeah, make them yeah. have to back up their words. So, that's awesome. For sure. Hopefully, we see a third fight down the line, and um, you know, yeah. Well, she's um, she's transitioned to um, MMA now, and I um, was like, oh, that could be a that could be an interesting third fight. But oh, there we'll we see, go. We'll see what happens. There we go. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. Um, you don't know what happens in the future. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, um, at the moment during lockdown, we're just training hard, um, trying to stay focused. <laughs> Um, what, what are your, are you looking to get back in as soon as you can? Um, yeah. What's, what's the plan once we're allowed to have shows again and things like that? Are you just going to try and book as many as you can? Yeah. Well, um, so I've been training a lot. Um, I, uh, definitely have been overeating, but I'm, uh, <laughs> don't really want to say exactly how much, but I'm well, no. well, well, well away from flight weight. <laughs> no, that's all right. That's all right. Um, as I think most of us are. Um, So I'm trying to, I'm starting now trying to, I'm not eating like a strict diet. Like I still want to eat what I can. Um, but I'm just cleaning my eating up to try and get my weight back down so that as soon as they say this shows up, I want to be the first person on the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 
I think, yeah, um, I, when this yeah. is over, I just definitely want to go as many as I can, but it'll still be the same thing of, um, I'm always struggling to get flights. So we'll just have to see what happens. Mm. I think, um, I think something that like a lot of fighters, um, like I've tried to stay relatively healthy, uh, but I'm still definitely eating what I want and training when I can. But um, I think personally, and a lot of other people have said this as well, is it's kind of nice, like as much as we miss fighting, it's kind of nice to not have that pressure of when's the next fight? Who am I fighting next? It's it's actually, um, it's nice to take a little bit of a step back and just, you know, um, now's the time that you work on the things that you don't normally get a chance to work on because you, you know, you've got to be fit. You've got to be really strong for the next fight. Um, and you know, you've you got to get that win or, or you've got to get that good performance, but now's the time that you can work on those little things. Um, and it's just kind of nice to take a little bit of a break. Um, have you, have yeah. you enjoyed the break that you're having? Like, I know that you're obviously like everyone else and you, and you want to get back, back in as soon as you can. But, um, I know personally, like I've really enjoyed taking a little bit of time off doing a bit of training by myself and training with my mates when I can, but it is that nice little refresher where for the first, you know, month and a bit, I was like, uh, it's kind of good to, you know, not be exhausted and sore all the time. Um, but now I'm definitely getting back to a point where, yeah, like I just want a show to happen, but yeah, I, th- I think the break's been nice for everyone. Um, no, not at all. You I'm hate it? Dying. I'm, I hate it. I hate everything. I want to go to the gym. I'm going to kiss the canvas when I get back into the gym. Like, yeah, I just, yeah, not nah, everything. Particularly, I think, uh, uh, coming off a loss, like my last fight was a loss and a very close yeah. one. Like I just want to jump straight back in. I want to fight. I don't want to sit here and brew on that. I want to get back in. Yeah reprove myself to me like I, I hate it I'm, i hate it so much <laughs> now something um i will ask that myself you and cody we always joke about this and um uh, and it seems to be the only thing you guys can have jabs at me about uh losing <laughs> fights but um like, i i've definitely <laughs> i've definitely after every loss um i think i've come back a lot better um and i've taken yeah. away and really learned from it how are you because because your last fight, you very like. Um, I spoke to you a bit about it, and it was very much like um, one of my performances that I had, where you just couldn't. You were there, and it was close, but you just felt like you could not get out of first gear. Um, yeah. How how do you come back from that? Like like what's what's your thought pattern? Because everyone has off nights. Like yeah. sometimes you just fight people that you know what you, you should beat, um, mm-hmm. or you know it shouldn't be as hard as it was but you just, yeah. you don't show up on the night. Like how, how do you deal with that? And, and what's your thought process behind that? Yeah, I definitely think um, I wasn't there on the night. I'm not too sure exactly what the reasoning for was it, but even uh, backstage, I just didn't, I didn't feel the same. I felt really relaxed. And I think, <coughs> sorry, um, it may have come down to, um, I just underestimated the skill that I was fighting. You know what I mean? Um, I think that probably played a big part. Like I didn't, really feel intimidated by her which I have felt with a lot of girls that I've fought not intimidated but I like really thought that they were going to give me a run so I think I probably went into it maybe too confident um and then in the ring I just I don't know what it was I just felt flat like I didn't have that pumping adrenaline um and I was just kind of I don't know I watched the fight back and it makes me so angry like I was just lazy like she'd throw a kick and I'd evade and I'd just stand there and yeah. let her punch my guard. And I was like, Katie, you should have thrown something back. But it, it was still a close fight. Like, it still did come down close. Um, like, the everyone's saying, oh, I thought you won, all that kind of stuff. But it doesn't really fuss me um, too much. But, yeah, I definitely, um, like, think um, it's just need to, like, um, there was talk of a rematch. So um, it wasn't even from me, um, the promoter, because we were the main event of this show. Um, first time women had main evented in Canberra. Um, <laughs> feminism. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's how it should be. Yeah. And um, the word promoter actually said, "We want to. See, everyone, does everyone want to see a rematch?" And the crowd all cheered and stuff like that. So um, there is talk of a rematch. It was supposed to be in August, which probably won't happen now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think we're definitely um, going to run that one back. And I think this camp, um, they were talking about putting my belt on the line as well. Um, but we'll have to see with that because my belt is in a lower weight class. So I bumped up, um, yeah. I would fought her at 66 and my belt's in 63. Yeah. So it'll be if she can make that weight class, but I'm definitely happy to put it on the line. Um, and the same thing, I'm not going to let anyone take that from me. So, yeah. but it'll definitely be good. I'm going to be definitely take away more seriously and just 
have to come back stronger. It's just one of those things. Everyone has an off night. Yeah. And, and I think, um, something but like that you, you've literally just said is, um, you're at a, like, and I don't think, um, it's me giving you too much of a big head saying this, but you, you are one of the top girls, um, in Australia for Muay Thai. So, um, you know, most matches that you go into now, it's going to be essentially you're the favorite. You're the one that's got to find that yeah. fire and that motivation to beat these girls because more than likely she would have been training and going, you know what, like I've got to, I've got one of the hardest fights in my life coming up against me. Like I really yeah. got to take it to this girl. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's a good lesson. Like I definitely, the night that I had um, a really off night, I, I learned straight away from that. Um, when I, you know, felt that I was too comfortable in a certain aspect. So next fight, I went and booked my first K1 fight to, to try and put myself out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, I think essentially at some point, if you, if you haven't encountered a loss or, um, you know, kind of even in yourself, just being exposed to stuff that you're comfortable with, it, it's something that needs to happen. Otherwise you'll just stay to level it. And now I think yeah. um, after having a situation like that with you, there's, any girl you fight from now on, it's going to be like, I don't care who you are. If you don't have a name, if you do have a name, I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to treat it as if you're my hardest fight. Yeah, definitely. And um, it definitely was like that as well. Like I think she absolutely trained like the house down for that fight. Um, she actually, I've seen her post and stuff and even in her after speak, she goes, you know, I respect Katie so much. This is a fight I've wanted for a long time. And people were just telling me, cause she has, and been in the sport for as long as me but um like I remember I won my first belt when she had her first fight um and like I remember people were telling me like oh she's been at your fight saying one day I'm gonna fight her so I think she like I'm so happy that I like got to give her that experience as well like yeah. um that that was a big thing for her um that she came up um and took a fight and I yeah it's a good feeling knowing that people respect you like that as well yeah. Um, but from now on, definitely, <laughs> it's, less, it's a lesson learned. I won't take anyone. I don't care if you've had one fight. I'm not going to take anyone lightly. Yeah, exactly. And that's, um, I think that's something, especially your level, that you'll have to be um, very aware of because uh, there are going to be a lot of girls that are up and comers now that are going to, you know, <laughs> look, look at you and go, yeah, yeah. like one day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to fight her and I'm going to beat her. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just part <laughs> of, um, yeah, having that, having that profile about yourself. So. Yeah. Um, now the other thing I really wanted to talk to you about is because <laughs> sometimes I found it absolutely fucking hilarious when you've told me about some of the stuff, but being, and I'm going to say this lightly so people don't roast me, <laughs> but being a female in essentially a man's sport, um, <laughs> there are a lot of struggles that come with it. Now you've <laughs> constantly posted or uh, told people about the amount of creepy guys that <laughs> you, uh, you know, pick up lines like, oh man, I'd love you, love you to just punch my face in all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Give me essentially a bit of a rundown of what it's like to be a female in a, in a, essentially a man's sport, even though it's not really, but. <laughs> um, yeah, like definitely you get lots of, creepy people um messaging you and stuff like that because i i think people still find that people are still fascinated with women being violent like they are not over it like it still is um like hitting people's brains wrong that women are doing this you know what i mean um even though we are so much more developed um and dominant in the sport now it still is an interesting thing i feel um for men to watch and stuff like that um and yeah i get i get weird messages all all the time that guys like i want you to bash the fuck out of me <laughs> and like just stuff like that or yeah. even um i find lots of guys um when i talk to them like guys that aren't fighters um they almost talk to me like they know more about fighting than me because because they're a guy yeah um i remember one guy was telling me once he was talking to me and he, um i think he said i trained ufc or something like that and it was like just laughable from the start and um he said to me, oh, yeah, K I told him I fight K1. And he's like, oh, yeah, K1 and MMA are really similar. And I almost mm. choked. I was like, oh, go yeah. away. Just, just, just go away. Like, yeah. I think, yeah, I like that's a really common thing. Like, guys just think that they know more about you because you're a woman. And not to um, blow myself up, but I know more about the sport than most men that are in the sport. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Not most, but a lot of men that are in the sport. Um, and so it just is a frustrating thing. But um, I do find it very... Um, satisfying when um, the new guys 
will come to the gym and sometimes they'll touch my gloves and they'll be real arrogant, like just like sit there, like wiggling their hands, like they're not going to do anything. And then I'll just make sure they know that yeah. they're nowhere near my level. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so I do get a lot of pride out of that. And then like usually halfway through the round, they're trying to take your head off because they're getting the shits that a girl's bashing them. Yeah. It's very satisfying. Um, well, I, I know we've only sparred once. And um, the <laughs> as soon as we started sparring, I was like, fuck this. I'm not switching off at all because I know if I do, I'm going to get head kicked or something like that. And um, that was actually going to lead to my next, um, next point. Yeah. How do you, do you find that you come across a lot of um, disrespect from either? Um, and, and this is no knock on him. Sometimes like I've, I've accidentally done this myself. Um, if I've been, you know, sparring one of the um, girls at the gym or something like that, where, um, I've slacked off because I thought, oh, you know, like she can't hit me as hard as someone else. And and it, sometimes it's instinctively done by guys. But have you found that you've come across that where you have been disrespected in, in training and stuff like that because someone's looked at you and just thought, oh, you know, like she can't do this or, or she won't hit me as hard or, or something like that. And, and how do you overcome that? I mean, of course, you can overcome it by punching them real hard in the face. But um, yeah, how do you process that? Yeah, I find most most of the time guys will pretty much get the message. Like if you're if I feel that I'm being disrespected, I'm gonna turn it up. And I don't necessarily like I hit pretty hard. Like like I said, I'm not a small girl. Um like I am a bigger girl, so I do hit um pretty hard. Um so um I just like to usually when I spar be really technical and let them know that man, this girl really knows what she's doing. Like you can tell that I've been doing it for a long time. So I like to do sweeps and stuff like that and evade and things like that to show them what I'm doing. But honestly, most of the guys, like I go around to a few gyms and spa. Um, most of the guys that I know will not take me lightly at all. Like um, I go down to a gym, uh, Strikers Labs, and those boys there will put it on. Like we spar so hard. And I think they've really got the respect for me that they know that I'm going to turn it up and I'm going to match the pace. Like most yeah. guys that know me know that you don't need to uh, pussyfoot around. Like she's she can take it and she's going to dish it back as well. Yeah. Which, um, yeah, I, th I think, I think is uh, really good. Like I know I've been guilty of sometimes, you know, like <laughs> there's this one young girl at our gym, Taylor, and there's a couple of times I've been, um, really kind of cocky essentially because I'm a bit of a tall fighter anyway. And, and, you know, I've used stood back hands down and, um, this young girl hits like a young Mike Tyson and, um, <laughs> and I'll happily admit I love it. a few times she's come over and just hooked me and, and, you know, I've seen that little flash of stars and I've gone, yeah. All right. Doesn't matter who they are. You treat everyone the same. And, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I think, um, I think sometimes that can happen. Um, now the other thing I want to ask is like, just because, um, you know, being such a high rank female fighter yourself, have you copped disrespect at all from promoters or, or guys at shows and stuff like that? Cause, cause like you said, it's, it's absolutely awesome that you were the main event of um, the last show and, I think it's good that that they did that um, because we'll often find that sometimes, you know, even if there is a killer, absolute killer female fight, mm -hmm. they will just put two guys above it just to, I don't know, like it's just stuck in their old ways kind of thing. But um, yeah, how, how have you found um, with dealing with stuff like that? Have you found that you've been um, disrespected a few times like that? Or have you found that it's relatively been usually pretty fair? Uh, I think I'm l very lucky enough um, to, I've never really from promoters or anyone like that, really people in the fight world, I haven't felt disrespected of. Um, I think um, probably because I, um, people know me, I'm very genuine. Like people know that when, if I'm booked for a fight, I'm going to show up. I'm only going to pull out if I, if the doctors say, no, you can't fight. Um, they know I fight a big weight bracket. They know I want to fight. You know what I mean? Um, so I think um, I've always got respect because of that mentality that I've had. Um, but um, I totally agree with what you said about um, sometimes the men are the main event and then the women's fights are better. Like um, the UFC, I think it was Cowboy Cerrone and Joanna um, was the undercard for it. And yeah. the girls strawweight title fight was one of the best fights I've ever seen. And then, yeah. no, it couldn't have been McGregor. It was someone, someone else was the... Um, the main event it was a guy's fight was the main event and they were the co-main for the straw weight belt 
and it was just insane fight and everyone's saying that should have been the main event you know what yeah I mean? so women's fights are definitely getting taken like way more seriously now i think it's very um exciting what's happening yeah which is i, I think i think that's um absolutely where it needs to be going like you see one championship as well like some of the fights that they have there, like Stan Fairtex and um, Janet Todd mm. and things like that, like they're just some absolute killers and they've got some really good female fighters um, that can headline shows because people, people want to see it. And, and especially yeah. if, you, um, if you know the sport and you've been around the sport, you'll see that, like, man, watching um, uh, Valentina Shevchenko, like, you know yeah, that if you, yeah, if you watch her fight, she's usually going to absolutely sleep someone or just dominate them and put on like world-class striking. Um, so I think it is getting to a good point where people are starting to go, yeah, you know what? Like, cause I, I know that um, a couple of shows I've been to, it's like all the kind of um, fe- female fights have been relatively at the bottom of the card. Like um, they're, they're first up. Um, mm-hmm. But like I said, when, when I, for, when we both fought on that show, I instantly knew that when I got there, I was like, yep, yeah, like this chick's been around, she knows what's going on. And, and, um, and I think it's a good thing that, that some girls should definitely do if they're not already doing is you carried yourself in a way that um, not even knowing you, I had no idea who you were. And I just, I just knew, okay, yeah, like she, she's been around this game. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. And like what you said, when you're kicking pads um, at the back in New Zealand, like through what you do, like people are starting to, um, starting to realize that, yeah, like female, <laughs> females are, they're really good to watch in this um, sport and, and it's going to go a long way, which is good. Um, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> dodging all the creepy inboxes and um, guys being weird to your shows and, and things like that. And also from what I've heard, it seems to be really weird middle-aged men that think that hitting on like a, a 20 year old fighter is going to work out well for them. And I, I don't know where they get that idea, but please, if any of you guys are watching this stop, it's embarrassing get out of my inbox yeah exactly <laughs> otherwise when she punches you in the face it won't be from a, a romantic reason it'll be because she wants to hurt you um but yeah leading leading off of that um i've had the pleasure of you refing one of my fights didn't go my way but um uh, it is what it is um you ref do you also judge as well yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, um yeah. do both um yeah, so um, I do all three. I think I started it maybe maybe two years ago. Um, I did my first course, and it's like an apprenticeship. So you do the course, and then you shadow everyone. Um, and then I managed – so I was able to ref my first fight um, on a Tim Jury show um, down the coast, I think it is. Yeah. Um, that was my first time refing a show. Um, and I was nervous. I was so nervous of doing it. Um, and – um, they kind of gave me like the lighter people. They gave me all the girl fight because uh, the girls were having like their first fight. Um, they gave me like the younger guys and stuff like that. Um, and so it was honestly, refing is the absolute best way to watch a fight. Like in COVID, one of the things I'm missing most is refing fights. Yeah. Like just being that close and you hear it. And like, I actually struggle to not make facial expressions. Like, <laughs> yeah, like sometimes true. I see things and I want to go, like (laughs) yeah i just yeah it's crazy and you see the kicks that close and hear the things and um um one of the boys um on the last show that i refed um a full force boy through this kick and i'm just i have the screen recording of it um he almost kicks me and like my face and it's like (laughs) because i go to step in to fix his i go stop and go to step in to fix his elbow pad and i just almost get cleaned up with a kick so it is very it's a dangerous thing like you need to know what you're doing in there um not only dangerous for you but dangerous for fighters as well like if you don't call a fight at the right time that can cause serious injury backlash on the sanctioning body um all those kinds of things um but yeah i definitely i live eat breathe when i you know i do it myself i'm a pt for it um, and then I do refing and judging. Like all I want to do is talk about it and stuff like that. So it's yeah. just a great way. Um, I love it. I wouldn't. Um, I'd rather spend my Saturday nights judging or refing at a show than going out to a club and dancing. Yeah. Um, well, you can always dance at a show as well, so you can you can do both. But um, <laughs> to, talk to me a little bit about judging, like um, because it's. I don't think any judge will ever go through their career of judging without having someone go, "What you don't know what you're fucking talking about." Right, right, right. Yeah. Like there's times that I've had fights that either 
like, you know, my teammates have fought in or I've fought in. I've just gone, oh, I think the judging was a bit off on that one. But how, how did you find judging? Um, maybe just give people a bit of an insight to what you're looking for when you're judging. Um, yeah, yeah just, just talk to us a little bit about that because it'd be good to get an insight of someone that's actually judged the Muay Thai fights, what they're looking for. Yep. All right. I need, I got a big thing for this. Okay. I try not to say things on social media when I see people complain because it's we like you're, you're a business. Yeah. Okay. So you don't comment back at things. Even when I want to message people and say, you're a fuck bit, like I can't do that. Yeah. Um, but on this podcast here, I'm going to say exactly what I think. If you are not a judge, shut up. Honestly, unless it's an absolute rot and you truly, truly believe that. And you've not just watched the show at the fight, gone home and watched the recording of it a few times, not just once, a few times, and then a week later, and you still to your core think, no, nah, that was a rob, then send an email. Don't carry on like a dickhead. Um, don't, after the fight, scream at the judges, because everyone, I don't get it. I've seen guys who have been in the fight business for years still yell at a judge. Like, what is that changing? What are you changing right now? Nothing. You just look like a dickhead. Um, it's very different... Um, when you have an emotional attachment to a fight. So when you're watching someone that you want to win, when they hit them with something good, you're thinking, oh, yeah, he's got him. We have no emotional attachment. You know what I mean? We're just watching the back and forth of it going. We're not watching everything this person does, making sure they're okay, seeing when they get hit. We're watching both of them. We're watching it go back and forth. You know what I mean? So I think that's a big thing. And I think you need to watch the fight weeks later when you have no emotional attachment, when you're over it, when it doesn't matter the result anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but every sanctioning body is different too. So um, in New South Wales, um, we have Massa and WKBF, which are very similar scoring. So um, their scoring is more, um, I'm just speaking WKBF of what I think, because this is what I've picked up, um, but I judge for Massa. Uh, we're looking for effective techniques and being well-rounded. Not someone that's just punching, someone that's using all the techniques, that's being effective with the techniques. Um, whereas if you fight on an MTA show, they are like Muay Thai scoring. You know, it's like they're trying to Thailand score. You know what I mean? If you bash someone with hands a whole round, but they sweep you like once, there's a good chance they're going to give it to the other guy because it's Muay Thai. You know what I mean? So I think it is a very big thing that if you're fighting and you, Probably not for beginners, but when you're up and maybe for coaches to know, look at the sanctioned body you're fighting on. You know yeah. that if you fight on a Massa or a WKBF show, if you do one sweep and get flogged with hands, you got flogged the whole round. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you got to know the sanctioning body that you're fighting on. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think um, is, I've, I've seen, um, I've seen a couple of people, that, yeah, on social media that have gone, oh, you know, like, you you did more in the clinch. You landed more knees. You, you swept. I, th I think you won that fight, but maybe you didn't do as well handling with the other opponent throwing combos and things like that. And and um sometimes you've got to understand that you know like yeah if if you're fighting on an um on an MTA show yeah like good Muay Thai techniques that they, they will do you really well. Um, and where if you're fighting on a massa show and things like that, like you've got to understand that. You know, it sometimes can be a different scoring and people are looking for different things. And it's not that, you know, one's better than the other. It's just they're, they're just looking for different things. Like, you, we see it all the time in MMA. We see guys that go, oh, you know, bloody ground game's boring. Guys are just hug and wrestle on the ground. It's boring. It's like, yeah, but you've got to understand that that's a huge factor in MMA. And, that, and that's, you know, like that guy may have been held down for four minutes of the round and, and you know, like stopped from getting up but he gets up at the end and lands, you know, one, one or two big punches and a kick and someone goes, Oh, he did, he did more damage that round. It's like, well, he kind of got manhandled for the rest of it. So um, I think, yeah, probably a good thing to do is to understand what sanctioning body you're fighting under, uh, what they're looking for and, and what to expect as well. Um, have you ever, <laughs> have you ever had anyone kind of question or have a go at you after about any of your judging and, and, and how have you dealt with that? Um, I haven't had anyone like after a show come up to me or anything. Um, I've had, um, like people like, so corners afterwards, like come up and be like, what's that? And honestly, like, I just don't even engage with it because you're carrying on. Like yeah. if someone comes up to me and genuinely says, Oh, why did that happen? If you come up 
yelling to me and carrying on, <laughs> honestly, I go like this. Like, I just said, put my hand up like that. Like, don't, don't talk. Don't, I won't even look at them. I just put my hand up. I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to speak to someone who's screaming at me to start with or carrying on. If you genuinely have a question, when there's no fights on or in a break, something come up and ask me and I'll be happy to talk to you about why, like why that person, other person won. But if you come up carrying on, I'm just not even, there's no point. There's no point. You know what I mean? You're just going to, you don't see, you're not logically thinking. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and I like the fact that you said, um, you know, you have to judge, especially when you judge, you have to, um, be completely, you know, from a neutral standpoint when you watch it, because, um, we're like, we're good friends out of this and, and you've refed my fights as well. And, um, I've said to you after I said, Oh, you know, like I thought I may have got that. And you've been completely honest with me. You're going, Jake, like you didn't get that. Like, yeah, it was close, yeah. but, th- but the other guy got the better of you that night. And, and I think that's good to know that, um, you know, there's not, <laughs> there's not judges in there that, you know, cause it, it, it would be, it would be hard for you. Like if you refed one of your mates to go like, ah, oh, this is close. Like, well, I'm just, just going to give it to them cause they're my mate. Like <laughs> if they're, if they're not winning, like yeah, that's how our sport grows. And that's how, you know, as a good, honest judging system. And, and it's good to know that we do have judges like that. Um, like mm-hmm. yourself that are kind of going, oh, you, you kind of said to me like, Jake, you didn't win that. Like, yeah, you, you yeah. did all right. You didn't show up and you didn't win. Like, and, and, and that's the honesty that we do need sometimes in the sport. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, um, I think when it comes to refing, you're like, and judging your mindset's just off. It's not, this is my mate anymore. It's you just in that different mindset. It's like, you don't know, like, um, in your fight. Yeah. I didn't, I remember at the end of it, like after the fight, I remember thinking, damn it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, nah, he didn't get that one. Like, and that's when it, like, I was right there. You know what I mean? Like I saw what was the most effective and stuff like that. And what was yeah, being exactly. Thrown. Um, and I would never lie to someone. If I, um, even my good mates, like my sister's a fighter. If I, she hasn't lost a fight yet, but if she lost a fight, I'll, I'll tell you, you know what I mean? I would mm. never say anything like that's not even from a judge standpoint. Like if I genuinely think something, I'm going to tell you. Um, and yeah, just when you, when you're in there, it just doesn't become that anymore. Like, um, yeah, sometimes like, I'll. Um, if I know the person, I'll be yelling at them in my head when I'm judging them. I'm like, throw a fucking kick. Or yeah. check that fucking kick. You know what I mean? But it's it's always neutral. Like I'm never favoring anyone or never gonna do anything to compromise the fight. Because if if I had a mate who was judging ref my fight, I wanna win fair and square. I wanna win because I'm better. I don't wanna win because I knew the right people, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've, and unfortunately it's very easy in um in combat sports to get certain places or get opportunities because um, you do know the right people. And there, and there's often times that um, unfortunately it's been said, like, you know, you go to some shows or you fight in some areas and they'll go, yeah, you're, you're fighting a home guy. Um, yeah. yeah. You kind of need to knock them out. Otherwise you're not going to win. Um, and, and it's, it's not how it should be. Unfortunately, like I, I personally think you see it a lot in boxing um yeah i think like a lot of people pad their records or or they essentially and it might hurt some feeling saying this but you fight bums until you get a big enough name um and then you'll eventually fight people that are at your level um it's, it can happen in any combat sport where you know it's sometimes who you know um which is which is sad when you think about it but it's how it is yeah yeah definitely um and i like yeah it's just is a sad thing and i don't know um how a lot of people walk away with that and um i mean you do see um i think it's a big thing like i think a lot of time you see things and you think oh they've only won that because they're the home person um but i think you do take into account as well of um which like for a good ref it shouldn't a good judge sorry it shouldn't take into effect but i think it can um if the home guy throws a kick the crowd's like goes off then that kick looks better you know what i mean like i do think crowd like it's very hard when you have people screaming behind you to really judge a fight like it is so hard um Mm. so i do think that um crowds can can play a big factor in it as well um yeah i don't know for other like sanctioning bodies and stuff like that i do think boxing um definitely a bit more um how you going but um, for kickboxing and stuff like that, I don't necessarily think it's that. I do think it maybe it's the crowd effect. Yeah. Um, than that, it, it, that's my opinion um, from what I've experienced. Yeah, and and I've I've seen it and um and had it 
personally as well, I've, you know, like um, I come from a gym where we're not really like no one in the corner yells out or goes crazy when you, when you do a strike there very much, you know, yeah. here's your instructions, you know what you need to do. This is how we've trained, you know, they'll talk to you when the in between the rounds, but, um, and, and, you know, like we've had that discussion, you know, do we need to have someone in the corner that, you know, Ooh, hey, every time you land something and yeah. um, you shouldn't have to have it, but I think, yeah, you are right. Like, um, like you do need to be aware that that can play a factor. Not only that, it's not even, um, it's not even that people are doing it so that like, I mean, people do do it. So the judges hear it and they go, Oh yeah, like my five, but it's also, you know, there's times that I've landed like a big right hand on someone and, and I can hear my friends going, Oh yeah, Jake, oh, come on, come on. And, and it, and it can spur you on. So people do do it to encourage the fighter as yeah. well. But um, yeah, it definitely does play a factor with the judges for sure. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll probably wrap it up in, in a second, but um, you said before that you're doing PTs. Um, now from what I've seen, you do a lot of PTs uh, with women how are you find like, I just want to ask you, um, cause I found a lot of my friends that have come and started to do combat sports or things like that. I've seen them go from where they start out super, you know, super scared and shy to where they're starting to get confidence, not only in their training, but in their life in general. Um, tell me a little bit about like some of the female clients you work with and, and how you've seen it just grow them as people and, um, and, and help them not only smash goals fitness wise, but in their life as well. Uh, yeah, I do. I train lots of, uh, my majority of my clients are women. Um, and I train from my youngest client who's just turned eight to um, uh, women uh, in their thirties, um, early thirties. So I do have a variety of it. Um, my little girls, I love, I love my little girls. They are um, the feistiest little bitches. <laughs> <laughs> they are just goers. They hit the pads so hard and, um, they are always asking me questions about my fighting and stuff like that. And uh, one of them actually came to one of my title fights, oh, which was so awesome. cute. Yeah. And I could actually hear her um, when I was fighting. So it was adorable. Um, and I, with my little girls, I just, I want to be that, um, that woman that they're aspiring to be. You know what I mean? I don't want them to, um, I don't care if this sounds bad. I don't want them to think that they just get married and have kids and work. You know what I mean? I want them yeah. to have something that like, like, gives them a purpose you know what I mean more than that um so I want to show them that women can be strong and go out and do all these cool things um so I love them so much and they train they train hard as and they're always smashing the pads it's really adorable no, it's um awesome. and um and then so I've got um women in their uh, 20s as well who um kind of do it for fitness and self-defense kind of thing um and lots of girls tell me um sometimes I message me and they're like oh I feel like I couldn't do anything right now like come and train me and they tell me that they feel more secure in themselves like like I said it is Western Sydney Penrith area um, and clubs here get rowdy so lots of girls say they feel more comfortable now that they've trained with me and they get to their level of sparring and they just feel like not that they go and do anything um, and I'd never encourage that out of anyone um, but they just do it to feel comfortable in themselves yeah um, and you can see the confidence grow in them for sure that's awesome um, yeah. And then I trained some um, 30 year old women um, who are like early thirties and um, they're uh, bodybuilders. So ex bodybuilders yep. that are thinking of transitioning over into Muay Thai. Yep. Um, so I think um, both their faces almost dropped when I told them they've got probably going to lose like 10 kilos because they're <laughs> just muscle. <laughs> and um, yep. I was like, you gotta be a twig bitch like me now. Um, <laughs> not at the moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no yeah um so just the changing in them um so one of my girls have been training for a long time she's really keen to get in there and going and just seeing her confidence um she's even told me she feels more humbled um yeah. now that she's come out and she's like spied the girls and stuff like that she says she feels a new level of respect for these people and um yeah i just it's just great like i love it i love seeing my girls get better you know one of the girls that i train um She's about 25. I've been training her for about a year. And just, I saw a video the other day of like one of our first sessions and she's like kicking up straight like a soccer ball. And now she's one of my, like easily one of my um, most like developed clients. And it just makes me proud, you know? Yeah. Like, um, honestly, like I get so happy when I see it. And when my mm. clients learn things or they remember things, like honestly, it makes me so happy. I'm so passionate about it. 
Yeah, no, that's that's awesome, and I've def- like I've I followed you on social media for a while, so I've been seeing that progress and and how you've been doing, and um, I think that's absolutely unreal. I think that you've got um, you know, you've got women that are essentially stepping into something that hasn't always been looked at for women as well, and now you know you've got them being more confident in themselves. They're getting fitter. They're getting healthier. Um, you know, they're they're feeling like they would be more confident in dangerous situations. Uh, which is good. And it absolutely sucks that women have to, um, I guess, essentially get to a point where they're like, oh man, I've got to feel confident in case anything does go down. Um, yeah. And yeah, like, I mean, I, th- I think it's good that you're someone out there that's um, really showing women, hey, look, like, you know, yeah, you, you don't have to, if you, like, if, if people want to get married and have kids, that's, that's all to them. But, you know, if, yeah. if someone wants to be a bad bitch that just, fights and, and kicks ass and does what she wants and um then that's that should be just as acceptable and i think it's good that you're out there advocating that that you know um yeah girls can do that definitely if they want to and, and showing them and and leading them into how to do that yeah yeah 100 percent. and like i've always um been really competitive and just um it was never like my thing like i didn't even like i didn't want to be a dancer like in high school and stuff like that yeah. I didn't want to um like I wasn't really fussed with all the boys and stuff like that like I was always like wanted to um do sport you know what I mean I wanted to do something I wanted to find and because I'd done kickboxing from a young age it was always I don't want to find someone and get married and have babies and that be it I was like I'm gonna be a world champion you know what I mean yeah. like exactly exactly <laughs> that was always my thing and I think it's important um that women um, really know that, you know, you don't have to do that. You know what I mean? I know um, like in our parents' generation, that that's what girls were supposed to do. Girls were supposed to fantasize about the magical wedding and stuff like that. And it's like, no, there's so many more things that you can do. Mm. Um, if that's what you want to do, that's cool. But um, I think now it's just much more accepted that that's not what you have to think. Yeah. And yeah, that's abs- yeah, absolutely right there. And I think, um, I think that is a really good attitude whatever you want, you work it out. Um, if girls want to go down that path and they're more than, they're more than welcome to, but then, you know, if girls are going, you know what? Yeah. I want to lace up a pair of gloves and I want to learn how to punch and kick. Then they've got people yeah. like you that are, that are showing them 100% how to do that. Um, so what I'll do is I uh, will wrap it up here, but what, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll put in the description, all of your social media links. Um, Go and check out Katie's stuff unless you are a creepy middle-aged man, then steer clear. Otherwise, you will get your head kicked off. Um, if you are not just a female, but if you're, you're a male that's looking to get into this sport as well, um, hit up Katie for PTs, um, especially if you're from the area or whatever it is that I've Western been learning. City. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been learning about. Um, yeah, please hit Katie up for that. Um, and, and yeah, just, just check out some of her fire stuff. And as soon as we are out of lockdown, um, let's get around to supporting her on the shows and, um, and showing up and buying tickets. But thank you so much for coming on. And I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to see when everything's up and running. Yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully get it out soon. All righty. Take ass. it easy. Awesome. Thanks, Jake. <laughs>